Okay, right now we're gonna talk about lights and I'm going to start with this light, which is the light that I use to illuminate myself and walk around and find things. This is my headlight. It has two positions for different intensity and it also has a red option, which is very handy when there are other photographers around. I don't, you don't want to light pollute everything. You wanna be nice to them so let's say you want to change something in your camera or you want to find something in your backpack you use the red light <laughs> so that way you keep kind of like everything else um, dark the red light is could be also very annoying for some <laughs> for some of them uh, but you know it is better than turning on the the light actually so this is my headlight um, for doing for light painting my subject I use uh, different lights um, let me start with this flashlight this is a very common cheap flashlight you can find at every 7-eleven and this is the one I use the most so uh, because it's very soft and I find it very very good for my light painting so for this flashlight I built this uh, color cups this is color gel I put and these are uh, plastic couplets I find at Home Depot so I went to Home Depot with my flashlight and I started looking around and I find that this couplet fits perfect so then I put uh, color gel different colors on every uh, cup this is purple the other one was blue this is red so this fits perfect. Uh, this is green and this is kind of like yellow green and this is kind of natural with a hint of uh, between brown and orange. So this is what I use the most for my light painting. Um, I find this light to be uh, not harsh at all so you know um, I love it <laughs> actually I made these um, color cups of different sizes as you can see for a reason why is that because in the middle of the darkness you don't want to uh, be turning the light to identify things so I wanted to be able to identify by touching them so I put all of these cups inside my pocket so then I got my head into the pocket so then by touching them I know which color I am choosing uh, you can also put one of uh, those letters that you can touch them and see you know um, which ones uh, you are uh, getting um, I highly recommend you to do some sort of code or something to identify in the middle of a darkness because Something you don't you don't want to do is like turning your light on to see uh, to see which ones uh, you're choosing. Uh, I also have this other flashlight. This is a little bit more uh, powerful, more intense. It has also four colors: white, blue, green, and red. Um, and I also created uh, caplets for this one. Uh, cups let's say cups color cups for purple and magenta I don't use this uh, light that often but I use it uh, because if I'm very close to the subject and I illuminate directly with this flashlight it is a little bit harsh but if I'm far away from a subject yes I find it uh, handy to have this flashlight I also use it when I want to create shadows and I'm uh, hiding behind my subject this is my second flashlight another light that I use is this one this is a very good option to put inside um, a subject let's say I am photographing an abandoned car or an abandoned RV or a small cabin and I want to light paint the inside of that subject this light become very handy um, uh, the name of the brown is Aputur and 
the wonderful thing about this light is that you can remote control it from an application from your phone. I'm gonna show the, uh, that in a minute. Now it's connecting. So you see, now I'm changing the colors and I can also change the intensity, as you can see. So you don't have to go inside, let's say you're shooting an abandoned car, you don't have to go inside your car every time you want to change the color. You can uh, be by your camera with your phone and remote controlling uh, the light. That is very good. It also has a magnet, a powerful magnet, so it can be attached to any metal surface. That is also a very good thing. You can buy more than one, you can buy two, three, four, and control all of them from this application. This is the application and the brand is Aputur. So I, I use this, uh, this light in certain occasions and it's very, very good, very handy. And another thing that I use to light paint is my drone. This is my Mavic 2 Pro and it has a light underneath that it turns on every time you take off and you're about to land, but you can keep it on going into the settings. So what I do is I put some color gel as you can see, some color gel. Uh, I also add a little bit of tape. And so then if you want to light paint, let's say uh, the ground and a big surface, let's say in the middle of a desert, you can do it by putting your drawing to a pretty high position and move it a little bit around and you uh, are able to light paint that. Or if you want to light paint a subject from above, um, something, uh, probably a house, or I use it at Toronto Pinnacles to light paint the pinnacles from above. Uh, from an unreachable position, you cannot reach from your flashlight, so then you can use uh, the drone. You move the drone above the subject and you light paint, it. then you take your picture. So that is, I don't use it very often, but occasionally uh, I, I use it. Another thing that you can do with your drone is use the lights that the drone have on the motors. It has green and red lights um, and create shapes. Um, you can put the drone to orbit automatically and then you, with the motor lights you're going to create, you can move it a little bit up, a little bit down and create spiral shapes and be that part of your picture. Um, that I didn't do it that many times, but I remember I did it a couple of times. And also because it's very, it's kind of complicated to pilot the drone and you know um, control your camera all at once. But you can do it. Um, I did it when I was with a friend. So one of us was controlling the drone, the other one was controlling our cameras. So that is another option to do light painting with your drone. So these are the devices that I use for do the light painting. Right now I'm getting into other devices like tubes to paint shapes into the picture, but that's a subject for a different video. Because uh, to create this collection, I only use all of these uh, lights. Most of you ask me how I create those images with the magical light painting on a foreground and the Milky Way as a background with the Micro Four Third camera. Well, today I have good news for you because I'm releasing a series of videos where I explain step by step everything I do to create those pictures. Three years of research and experience are compiled on these videos. I talk about gear, planning, settings, shooting, light painting, editing, and post-production for printing. I am also including my raw files for you to practice the editing process and a PDF summary guide, a quick shooting guide, and a guide to explore the Galleta Middle Sculptor Park in the Anza Borrego Desert, which includes the GPS coordinates of every sculptor and access to my Google project of the park. 
go to the link below or scan the code and take advantage of a special discount price I am offering for a limited period of time. I see you on my course.